we're cutting six feet of forage off of grass that would normally only grow to about two and a half to three feet tall. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It's another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and we have no topsoil. So today's vlog is all about how we've taken dirt like this with absolutely no biologic material and turned it into this beautiful luscious green pasture. So we're going to take you today and we're going to show you how we did what we did. All of this was bare dirt just like what I showed you at the beginning of the video. We're going to walk you through, talk you through everything that we've done and everything we're doing and what we plan to do in the future to continue to have a beautiful green farm that produces quality livestock and quality hay. All right? Woo! I ain't afraid to work, I ain't afraid to play, I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. So you've just bought your first piece of land, whether it's a new house or whether it's some acreage or whether it's a homestead, and you've got to get grass established. It's about time to start thinking about getting grass established sometime in the September, October time frame here in North Carolina where we are. If you look out here, it looks like the surface of Mars. That's what all of our fields looked like. They were all overgrown with saplings about this big that were just too big to cut with a brush hog, so we had to push them up with the bulldozer, which basically eliminated every bit of our topsoil, just like this. The ground was covered with rocks, just like this. We took a landscape rake, we raked all this out, and this spot has not been addressed yet. This is a new spot that we're working on this fall. We took a landscape rake, we raked all the rocks up, we put them in a hole, to prevent washing, so that's a very important thing. You wanna prevent washing on your farm. We put all that mess in a hole and we drilled down grass seed with a no-till drill. Most counties, you can go to your county extension office and lease a no-till drill or they can refer you to the next county over so you can lease a no-till drill and drill down grass seed in the fall so that it takes in the winter time. Now, we took this and turned it into the second stage, which is right up here, and I'll show you. It's very sparse, it's new grass, it's just getting started. And we're gonna talk about the stages of grass growth and what the science is behind all this. So we're over here at our pond, and I'll post a link at the end of this video to when we cleaned all this up and put this grass seed down. You can see a difference here. Look at the difference in this grass versus this sparse, dispersed grass. What is the difference here? This is the same grass, the same stuff was drilled down here. Everything's exactly the same. There are a lot more weeds into this area and there are a lot less weeds here and the grass is thicker because we mowed it. We mowed and mowed and mowed. Intensive mowing is how we're establishing our new pastures and our new grass. So what the problem is here is that this dirt squat down here so the problem is this dirt is hard as a rock and there's no biologic material we sent our soil samples off we had 0.03 percent biologic material that's like dust in a bucket it's it, it's not much biologic material the weeds will tell you what the grass needs So in other words, as the weeds come up in here, as we mow those weeds down, they'll feed the land and they will tell you the grass needs to be fed by cutting those weeds down and providing biologic material for the soil. So we've taken spots like what you just saw over there that's just bare dirt that wouldn't grow anything other than a weed and we've drilled down grass seed. So what we drilled down here was a Kentucky 31 fescue and annual rye grass mix. If you have a really, really dry area, I put some millet in there and millet will grow on a rock, literally. And all this is, is one big rock. There is no topsoil here. This was an old abandoned tobacco farm and basically in the Piedmont region of North Carolina where we live, there's no topsoil left but we're building topsoil. Now you can build this topsoil with herbivores, 
once you've established grass like this, but you can't build it with herbivores when you've got that right there. So we've got to intensively mow for several years in order to feed the land to fill in the gaps of what we're doing right here. There's a specific science behind this. We want to keep the grass in a specific stage of growth, and we'll go over the growth stages of grass now. This is what we want. It is grass clippings. It is thatch. It is topsoil building nitrogen rich, carbon rich material that we have all over this pasture right here. So we have intensively mowed this pasture five times this year with a finish mower. And what we want to do is catch our grass and keep it in a certain stage of growth that promotes vigorous growth. So grass wants to be stimulated. Grass wants to be ran over. Grass wants to be stepped on by hooves. Grass has historically been intensively grazed over eons and eons of time. And it has been stimulated by being grazed and by being trampled and by growing. So grass has several different stages of growth and I'm going to simplify this just for the sake of this video. But you have the germination grass, the grass that's just germinated, that's just got its start. It's about this high. It looks like little pieces of wire. It doesn't have blades on it. It doesn't look like grass. Then you go to a vegetative stage of grass and that's when you get these big beautiful wide blades of grass. That's the important stage. You want to keep the grass in what I call the teenage years or the vegetative stage of growth. We want all of our grass to grow like that. 85% of the grass that's out here is growing just like that. Now we want a variety of forage for our cattle so we have a little bit of Lespedeza. There's a tiny bit of crabgrass in here. There is a little bit of fescue grass. There is a little bit of wild millet grass and there's also Johnson grass out here. Now we don't want a whole lot of Johnson grass because that can be bad and the cows can dislike the taste once it gets a little bit older. I'm learning as I go and I'm teaching you as I go. We thought we would come out here, we'd take a broadcast seed spreader and broadcast seed. In other words, we filled up a hopper, came out here and spread seed all over the land. Did it germinate? No, it did not germinate because there was nothing for it to get a hold of. So the birds ate it, it dried up, it died, and it didn't come up. We learned drilling down seed is the way to go. So when you drill down seed, it actually puts it in about that deep. It's a no-till drill setup. It opens up the soil, drops the seed in, and runs back over it, packing the seed down, and gives you the grass that you want. We're going to re-drill all of our pastures in October, and we're going to drill it down with fescue, tall fescue grass, either K31 or K32 fescue. We're going to use a little bit of millet, we're going to use timothy, and we're also going to use a medium ladino clover. And what we want is a legume like clover that fixes nitrogen into the soil and we don't have to put fertilizer. So the carbon that comes from the grass clippings, and we're going to show you some of that carbon rich, nitrogen rich grass clippings here in just a minute. But what we get from those grass clippings and that ladino clover is a nitrogen fixation on our land to keep us from having to fertilize. And once we have cattle out here grazing, we can let those cows fertilize it with that good butt fertilizer we like so much. So let's talk about the grass stages again a transition stage. So this is grass in the transition stage. It is stringy. It is not in that vegetative stage that we want. We don't have a thick luscious grass. And this is the adult stage. So the adult stage is when these stems are green. And this is wild millet right here. I also have some fescue grass. And the millet just kind of gives you a better idea because the stems are still green. Okay, so that's the adult phase. That's after boot. And boot is when it shoots up and shoots out that seed head. And this is the seed head for the wild millet. And this is the seed head for the fescue. You can barely see the fescue seed head. Let's get a little close up. There we go. Now we get into antithesis or an old grandpa grass. So this is what I call close to grandpa grass. So it boots, in other words, it shoots that seed head out and then it dries. So this seed head will dry. It will put out pollen. It will be pollinated by the wind. This stem will turn brown and that's what I call 
grandpa grass, that's dying grass. And what you have at the end of dying grass or grandpa grass is no biologic material, no growth. This is the end of grass. And we don't wanna keep it at the end. We want to keep our grass in a vigorous teenage year of grass so that we get these luscious leaves right here, okay? So what we've done here on the farm, this is exactly how we did it. We cleared this land, we came right back in with a huge disc, a disc harrow, we harrowed the land up, we tilled the land up, then we came back in and we broadcast seeded it. It did not work the first year, so this looked like the Sahara Desert out here, again, covered in weeds for the first year. The next year, we had to drill down grass seed and we put a chemical fertilizer that was uh, rich in nitrogen. We actually just put a triple 17 fertilizer because we wanted the phosphorus for the root structure. We hit it with that fertilizer. It growed vigorously. It did a great job with the no-till drill, but we still had sparse areas of grass and mainly weeds took over. We mowed that for hay. We sold some of that hay. We used some of that hay on the land in spots that were washing. We just rolled the bales out and that fed the land. So when that fed the land, when I saw where we rolled the hay bales out, the grass was green and thick and luscious, almost too green to mow at a normal speed that we'd be mowing this pasture. And I realized to myself, this soil doesn't need fertilizer. This soil needs lime to correct the pH. So we get that pH closer to a neutral pH around seven and we need biologic material. So we've been heavily mowing this and we cannot put cows out on that sparse field or it's just gonna destroy it. So we've got to wait until our pastures are built and you need to do the same thing if you're thinking about getting livestock because you will overgraze and you will damage your land and you'll do more harm with livestock and manure than you will do helping the farm. So here's what we're spreading on the land. This thatch, carbon nitrogen rich thatch, grass clippings, grass clippings out here on this land. Now I want to describe to you what's gone on with this pasture over this year. It was not healthy, it was not good, it had less grass, it had more weeds, and as we intensively mowed it, it got greener and more lush and has more topsoil. Now we have about this much thatch down in that grass that's helping to retain moisture and to stimulate root growth and the spread of the roots of the grasses that we want. This video has been by request by a whole lot of people. Why didn't you mow hay or why aren't you mowing hay on your land? You cannot, cannot, cannot rob the land of nutrient and grass without putting something back. So we've got to give something back. Even in the Bible, it says to let your fields lay fallow every seven years. Correct me if I'm wrong. So we're letting the field lay fallow and intensively mowing. We get the grass at about 16 inches high and we mow it down to about four inches. We've done this five times this year. It will be six times the next time we mow that. So you think six times 12, that's six feet of grass. This grass would never, ever, ever get this tall. It would never be this tall. But as we intensively mow, we're putting down the thatch and the grass clippings and the biologic material that's building the soil consistently and intensively. So in other words, we're cutting six feet of forage off of grass that would normally only grow to about two and a half to three feet tall. We're putting twice the amount of forage that we would put down if we just mowed it once or twice a year, like most people do who just have pastures they're not using, or if we mowed it for hay, we'd even be doing more damage. So we'd just be stealing every bit of the nutrient and the thatch from the grass, every bit of that carbon and taking it away and feeding it to the cows somewhere else, robbing our land and forcing us to come in and put chemical fertilizers down. No chemical fertilizers have been put on this land for the last two and a half years. It's green, it's luscious, and this works guys. So if you want to know more about how to grow grass and how to establish pastures, please jump in here, subscribe to the Stony Ridge Farm. There's a lot more than meets the eye going on here on the farm. I want to show you what we're doing, teach you what we did wrong. And what we did wrong was broadcast seeding. And what we did wrong was just throwing fertilizer on the ground and thinking that was it. 
And the next thing we did wrong was we didn't let our pastures get established like we should have. And we cut hay off of it thinking we're going to make this fortune in hay. And we did not make a fortune in hay. We actually lost money running the equipment to cut the hay. So now we're intensively mowing. When we get our cattle, we'll have a great stand of grass and we will intensively graze this grass. A lot of folks have been commenting about the fence and we'll show you the fence system right here. So we've got uh, about a mile of fence around this pasture right here. This is gonna be used for hay field. We're gonna cut a little bit of hay off of this to feed our cows. We're getting four cows here probably in the next month or so. And we wanna make sure we've got feed for our cows, but we know we cannot rob our land. So we're feeding it adequately and it's providing us a return. Guys, I hope this has helped you in your decision-making process and your learning process of how to get your pasture land established and how to keep it established and keep it green. If you're like us and you live in a part of the country that doesn't have a lot of topsoil, you've got to build that soil and you have to build the land so that it will absorb moisture and the water doesn't run straight off the hill. Another thing we've been doing is intensively, and I say intensively, I mean every other time it rains, we're out here aerating. We wanna aerate, we wanna poke holes in the soil, we wanna provide for oxygen exchange, carbon dioxide exchange, and soak in water. So water doesn't run off this farm, it stays on the farm. And that's what your goal is. Keep water on the farm, build carbon in your soil, and get your grass growing, and you won't need fertilizer. It's awesome. Proof's in the pudding right there, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I hope I provided you a little education, a little bit of insight. Please post comments and questions if you have anything. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time on the Stony Ridge. Good luck building your soil. We'll Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge. I'm going to leave you guys with one final thought here. You do not need to let your grass seed out. My lawn, my pasture in front of the house has never ever seeded out. What you want is rhizomes to come off of the root system and spread that grass root ball. You want to build soil. You don't need to let your grass seed out. It's not going to matter. You need to clip it before it bolts, before it gets into grandpa stage and quits growing. You want it to grow vigorously throughout the season. All right? You don't need to let it seed out.